So a friend of mine today pointed out that I haven't done a book review in a while. And I was like, wait a minute, that's true. I haven't done a book review in a while. So before I go work out, I have to share with you this book that I have read for the past, well, two and a half days. It's the author, Sarah Richardson, and the book, Hometown Cowboy, the series, a Rocky Mountain Writer's novel. You have to check this book out. I picked some parts of the book that really was what grabbed me. Usually, if you don't grab me within the first few pages, I'm going to put the book down. And I love romantic comedies, kind of, that has to, you know, push the envelope a little bit. But anyway, we start out with page 54, where Romantics Anonymous say, Hello, my name is Jessa, and I'm addicted, or Je yeah, Jessa, and I'm addicted to love. Might as well face it. Now, there's a Robert Palmer song. It's basically word for word, but it's like totally cool that you would steal that and put that in your book. Uh, page 57, we find out what PDF means. That's P like Paul, D like David, and F like Frank. It stands for pretty damn fine. Page 85, Ni Naomi, who is Jess's friend, shows great concern to warn her against Lance. That's the hero of kind in the book, saying that he's that man has, hasn't had a real relationship with anyone ever, and reminds Jessa that Lance and her wouldn't be a long-term fit, and she, she simply wants what's best for her as a friend, and you know, trying to ward her off of a heartbreak, uh, saying, okay, as a friend, you may help Lance with his father, because he asks her to come and help him with the ailing father and she is not only like a friend of the family but he treats her like the daughter he never had because he has three sons and all three sons don't get along and the only one that is currently there is Lance and um, anyway Lance is a bull rider so he's preparing for his next rodeo circuit and um, it, it's kind of funny because why Naomi you know is telling just, you know, don't get involved with this man, you know. He, he doesn't want what you want. And um, he does, she just doesn't want uh, her hurt again. And Tucker, who is a friend of Lance's, is interested in Jenna, uh, Jenna, is it Jenna or Jessup? I don't know. I wrote down Jessup, but maybe Jenna. And I forget, I get my characters mixed up, but you have to check the book out. And anyway... Uh, wants to ask her out on a date, but Lance advises his friend, it's just not wise. She's involved with helping to f uh, form an animal shelter and just no time for dates because there was an accidental kiss um, that kind of, she was trying to be like, okay, you know what, I kissed you, but that's it. Don't chalk it up to any more but that. That's it because I'm warding off men because I've had three relationships. Sound familiar? And anyway, um, she's like, I'm just, I'm done with you. I, I, I can't deal with another heartbreak. Well, on page 93, the, there's sensual chemistry um, going on. And, and it builds up slowly through the whole book. Um, he cut, simply asks her what line of work, uh, or what, what makes her do the line of work she does, which is to rescue and save animals. And she says it's kind of a tribute to her dad. Here's an interesting point, because at this point, here's a common bond. She's doing something that reminds her of her dad, but yet he rides bulls because his dad was a great legend there uh, as a bull rider. So it kind of formed a common bond between the two. Um, of course, the kiss is shared. Page 98, Just he tells Jessa that PDF, he finds her PDF too. Page 99, Jessa asks Lance, you want me to kiss you because your life might never be the same after this. And that is a classic line. So I was like going, I have to say that. <laughs> Anticipation builds. Here's a side note, which is quite, quite entertaining. There are interruptions leading up to Lance and Jessa being intimate, constantly being interrupted. It's just, you have to read the book. It's kind of hilarious. Page 104, Lance likes how she takes time to tend to his wound that he's gotten from bull riding, showing care and concern, something that he's never really experienced before. 
page 106. Now, here I'm going to tie like a deer bombshell into this because I had a question come in that should outside interferences of what other people think or feel about you affect the opinion of the man that you're interested in? Now, here's where friends sometimes can hinder or sometimes can be your greatest help. But in the end, the man has to be the one to honestly overcome whatever's thrown at him. And Lance steps up to the plate. Now, listen to this. Naomi, now remember, that's the close friend of uh, Jess's there. She constantly, you know, trying to steer these two clear of each other because they don't need any heartbreak. And they've been friends and they don't need any, you know, cross lines. So, uh, you know, she's taking the, the, the lines there. And on page 104, uh, oh, no, I did that one already. Sorry, I got to catch up in my notes. Page 106, Naomi reminds Lance, Jenna doesn't know how to, quote unquote, just kiss and practically begs Lance to leave Jenna by saying, do you really want marriage? Have kids? And reminds Jenna, Je is it Jenna or Jess? I don't know. Anyway, and she says, talk to her, set her straight, and that actually Naomi takes the blame for Lance even noticing her because she's the one that was responsible for the makeup, the hair, and the contacts. And here's what I like most. Lance says on page 107, well, when she wasn't wearing makeup tonight, and why would you tell her to change her look? Basically, he's saying he fell in love with the way she was before the contacts, which mean the heavy rim glasses and the clothing wasn't that big of a thing. He fell in love with the person, not the outside package. But anyway, um, page, gotta get down here, 108. Um, after the amazing kiss, poor Je Jessus, she has her hopes set so high and her heart is palpitating basically with high hopes for her and Lance. Lewis, which is Lance's dad, he's kind of the cheerleader throughout the whole book, wanting to push these two together, and it's really cute. Um, but Lance and Jenna throughout the book, we get a dose of Jenna's friends, but Jessa has a soft spot for Lance's dad, Lewis, and he kind of has all these regrets, and because he's getting older, he wants to settle things, settle the score with all his boys, and he wants to get them all around the table, basically, and say, you know what, I'm sorry for the way I've treated you, and... She goes out of her way to make that happen. Lance doesn't take kindly to that, which causes more problems for them. And a very unwelcome homecoming happens, uh, causing more problems. But what really stands out, and I marked it in the book, because when you've been hurt so many times and you're scared to trust again in love or believe that it ex actually exists. Now I'm going to read this without my glasses, so this is big for me. Um, probably going to get a headache, which I just got over one today. Anyway, um, I'm going to try and find the, the spot here to enlighten you guys. Um, now, mind you, they've had a big feud, and he's wanting to fix things, so he's come over uh, to the house where she's at. And I'm just going to briefly touch on this. He says, let me come in, please. He begged, brushing his hand across her arm as he knew how, how much the weight his touch held. It did. One light touch from him ignited her. That's why he couldn't come in. She had no self-control when it came to Lance. If she let him in, he'd have her naked and in bed in five minutes, which only would make her love him and want him that much more. At some point, she had to stop doing this to herself. She edged the door, gripping it with a stability. Here's the thing, she said, scrubbing the emotion from her voice. I can't keep loving someone more than they love me. It hurts too much. There was no other way to say it. This whole thing with Lance had been more intense, more powerful than any relationship he ever had. She felt it deeper and she had to protect herself. He held her shoulders in his hands and forced her to face him. I want to love you. And she responded, but you don't. He sighed and his arms left, fell to his side. And she, he says, I'm not sure how to yet. The admission, 
cured, purged her anger, and gave sympathy room to grow. It's not something I can teach you, she told him. I always thought it was. Every relationship I've ever been in, I've tried. But that wasn't the way it worked. Turns out, it's not so easy. Turns out it, that it ends up only hurting me. I don't have the energy for it anymore. I'm tired of getting hurt, or, but maybe even more than that. She was trying, tired of trying so hard. You don't have to be the one to teach me, he insisted. I'll learn it on my own. I'll figure it out. She stepped backward underneath the open door, half inside her house and half outside. It's not something you figure out like some kind of puzzle. It doesn't have to be so complicated. It wasn't like passing a test or forcing yourself to work hard. Love is something you choose every day in happy moments, but in its terrible moments too. In the moments when you're so angry you want to hurt someone, you still choose love. And he hadn't. Oh, I love this book. These two go through such a ride in this book that you have to check it out. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. But on my book of recommendation list of books to read, top score right here. You must read this book. Back to my dear bombshell question, which I kind of threw in on the side there. My answer was kind of in there as well. It's okay to love the outside packaging, but what should matter most of all is the heart, the spirit, your fire, your inner being. If they can't love you for that, and they just love you for the outside, then it's nothing but purely physical. And that relationship is shortly doomed. That's my answer for you. And I wish you all the very best. That's all I'm going to do tonight because I have a workout to get in. Nice seeing you on a short visit. God bless.